Thanks for joining us this week. This is Jones the Journey. I'm Nathan and this is Betty. Hi. So this week we explore some more of the Crystal River region. We do some fun and interesting and very low cost or actually no cost uh, things in that region. And you can do this, find these kind of things no matter where you go. Um, and not only are they low cost, but they're fun to do. They're things we like to do. Yep. Biking and exploring and geocaching. And on top of that, if you are an RV family, or just a, not even an RV family, but just out on vacation and you want to include some educational things. Oh, oh did I say that word educational? You Don't did. let the kids watch this. Don't let this, the kids okay? watch this. Um, you can, they are educational as well as fun. So we hope you like the video. Please make sure if you do like it, hit that like button, thumbs up button. And uh, if you want to know when we post another video, subscribe and as she said, ring that bell. Thanks again for joining us, and remember, when you wander, wander with a purpose. Hey folks, this is Nathan with Jones Journey. Thanks for joining us today. Sorry about the road noise, but we are close to the road, so you're gonna get a little bit of that. Uh, today, we are in Florida, and this is one of the things that we do as we RV. Um, it makes RVing a little bit cheaper because there's no cost to these things as we find little in points of interest along the way, and we're gonna visit a couple of those today. And one of these is the Yuli Sugar Mill Ruins. Uh, it's a historic state park. It's a historic state park here in Florida. And uh, it's neat to see. It doesn't take an awful lot of time. They've got 
a uh, pavilion area with some uh, picnic tables so you can stop and take a break and have lunch and then do a little bit of exploring. If you have uh, school kids, uh, you can do a little bit of a schoolwork history lesson for the state of Florida. Yuli Sugar Mill Ruins Historic State Park. Homosasa has roots in many of Florida's first industries, including citrus, sugar, and tourism. This 1800 sugar mill is a reminder that the town, of the town's past and the industry's history. This steam-driven mill was a part of a 5,000-acre sugar plantation named Margarita, owned by David Livy Yuli, a prominent businessman and railroad builder in the 19th century. It processed sugar, can, sugar cane excuse me, into syrup, molasses, and rum. Cutting cane, making syrup was hot hazardous work, and the forced toil of enslaved laborers who built and operated the mill greatly contributed, contributed to the plantation's success. This is the mill. David Livy Yuli uh, built the first cross, cross state railroad and it was the state's first U.S. Senator. He came to Florida as an immigrant and rose to become an outstanding businessman state. And yes, during the Civil War, he was part of the Confederacy and he supplied the Confederacy with supplies. Check that out. Filled in now. <laughs> so what they would do here is they would take the fresh cut cane and put it through that press right there. Large rotating iron cylinders and the juice was collected into vats. The crushed cane bag called uh, Bagacy was piled and used along with wood to fuel the furnace. It was steam driven. Yep. Cool. This was piped from here in the cooking kettles. I'm guessing that was a cooking kettle. Or it's on the fire Neat. Oh. These were the kettles. Ah. So that was probably, then that was probably where they um, had, the had the fire going for the steam engine, huh? It says here the juice flowed from the settling vat into the Grande, the largest of the five kettles built over the furnace. That's so that would be there. There's also the coolest kettle being furthest from the battery kettle underneath which the furnace was fired. The chimney draft pulled the heat from the fire through the furnace to heat the kettles. The heated juice was hand dipped from the larger to the smaller kettle and ended up as syrup in the battery. The smallest and the hottest. Here it reached the stripe or sugar stage and then it was laid, uh, ladled into the trough and poured into a larger wooden vats where sugar crystals began to form as it cooled. After hardening it was spaded into slices carried in small tubs as the perjury curing room and packed on hog sleds or wooden barrels. So that's why they have these different names on the kettles. So basically it started out there at the Grande. Then it, went then it was ladled into the prop Propri. Right. And, and then, then it the went to the flambeau. And then the syrup, which isn't there anymore, into the battery kettle, which would be the hottest one and where the fire was. Interesting. So, once it finished here, 
it would then be labeled into ladled into wooden yeah, vats for it to dry, like for, to dry and crystallize. And then it would slice and then it, it would be sugar and spade it into barrels. Of cool. Sugar. What's it called? That's pretty cool. And it loops all the way throughout. It goes out that way, comes out this way. So it's like a vine. Yeah, it's all one big vine. Neat. Out here. Absolutely is. This is the This is the eco, eco trail. trail. Uh, just outside Got lots of evidence of uh, wild boar. Crystal oh, excuse me. Goodness. And if you're into caching, there is a group of 12 caches on this trail that is called the 12 Days of Christmas. Uh, they're easy to find. Um, and the only caution I have for you is uh, are out in the wilderness, so you know, be aware of animals and snakes. I saw a couple of notes uh, that somebody saw a copperhead out here, which of course is a poisonous snake. And uh, there's lots of evidence of uh, wild pigs out here. Yep, wild um, boars. But the biggest threat that I found out here is uh, fire ants. I got into a hill of fire ants and didn't realize it and get in the cache and uh, got bit. Getting bit by a fire ant is no fun. No fun so, at all. Uh, anyways, just be careful. Bring your bug spray. Make sure you bring plenty of water and a snack. And just keep your eyes open and enjoy. It is a two-mile loop trail. Yes, it's two-mile. But as you can see, the trail is pretty smooth. There's hardly any elevation gain, gain or loss. Yeah, you've got some areas where there are, like, roots yeah. along the path. But generally, it's... It's not it's, rocky, it's not high, it's not low. It's nice. And it's, it's pretty shaded because of the canopy of the trees. Yep. So. And it's a beautiful hike. Nice, beautiful. nice hike.